Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam. I'd like to welcome you to my iClarity podcast. This is a show that offers cutting edge information on how to improve your vision and overall wellness through holistic methods. I so appreciate you spending part of your day with me. If you have questions, you can send them to hello at drsamburn.com. Now to the latest iClarity episode. Well, it's good to see everybody and glad to be here and I hope you are. So I want to find out how has it been going and we can either do this like popcorn style where you can kind of talk when you want to or I won't call on you because you can (laughs) you can always write some things in the chat if you want to do that. But uh, you've had a good chunk of time to do the practices and I'd love to hear if there's been any movement, any change in your, uh, in your process. So when you want to jump on, just uh, unmute yourself and uh, we can bring you up on stage and you can talk. I can go. Can I go, Dr. Okay, Burnett? You sure can. You got the floor. Is it me or I don't? Yeah, it's you. It's okay, you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. A lot has has gone on. <laughs> um, it was interesting okay. hearing about the, Sharon talk about the um, the oils because those have been really helping me. And Sharon, my husband didn't like the smell of them either. And then I started putting them on him. Like if he said, oh, I have a headache. I said, let, let me try something on you. And then I would rub it on his temples. And um, now he likes them. So, cause it helped him and somehow, I don't know if it was psychological or whatever, but I do them, especially when I'm working on the computer and I'm feeling tense at work, I'll remember, okay, I have my oils and I'll just, I really like the spray and I'll just spray it on my yeah. eyelids and it just does wonders for me. Um, I am I am no longer wearing my progressives. Um, I went and just bought um, readers in the different um, ones for when I, I don't even need them when I drive anymore, by the way, um, mm. for when I'm on the computer. Um, really, that's the only time I need my glasses. I was at work today and didn't realize I didn't have them on like, nearly all day and we had an event and it wasn't needed i'm finding that i'm really only needing them for the the computer um which is great Mm -hmm. so i'm so grateful for that because those progressives were making my stomach hurt and it just didn't feel right it was something it was doing to my head um i've also been doing the um color therapy um that's been helpful to me and i do it when i go on walks because um, okay. I had actually oh, listened to one cool. of your um, your podcasts <laughs> where you yeah. close your eyes and look at the sun, uh, you know, and I've, I had tried that and that seems to really help. My floaters have decreased. I only have mm-hmm. one little one now, every now and again. Um, and when I close my eyes and look toward the sun, I can, I can kind of see it. I, see. Um, I changed my... Um, my diet, I've always been a vegan, but now I'm trying to do more anti-inflammatory um, mm-hmm. eating. And I think that's helping. My goal is to get where I can look at the computer without the glasses. I know it's going to take a process. Okay. It's going to take some time, but I'm seeing mm-hmm. some, some progress. Um, the only time my eyes get a little blurry, I find is when I'm stressed. When, mm-hmm. when I'm stressed out, then I just remind myself, no you know, the blur is okay. And I calm myself down and then it'll, it'll go away. And I was at my son's karate um, competition. And one of the men was saying, I need to get my glasses. I can't stand looking out here in the, in the, in the blur. And I was like, oh, I know, I know what, <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. what he, what he means. You know what to do. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So you got this whole group here and some people are challenged and struggling and not making any progress. 
what is the secret sauce? What what is it that you feel unlocked the improvement? And what can you convey to these people, um, Sharon and you, who are really struggling? Um, Because you're all doing the same practices. They're all there for you. So what has been the key for you to unlock this ability to improve? And maybe it'll help um, your fellow retreatants. What would you say? I think it was my mindset. um, Mm -hmm. Just getting out of my head, trying to control everything um, Mm -hmm. and just doing what felt intuitively right. Like if I felt mm-hmm. that those drops were helping me, the the um, oils, then I would I would use them. And I'm not a creature, mm-hmm. you know. I'm not trying to make a habit out of it because I've done that in the past, where you just do something and then it just mm-hmm. becomes my new. Because I just barely started the eyes at the sun maybe mm-hmm. a week ago, because I knew it was mm-hmm. time for me to put on something new. I think mm-hmm. it was just um, trusting the process, mm-hmm. uh, trying what works, and if it didn't work. I let it go and I didn't judge myself on that. Um, mm-hmm. Right. So I want to uh, emphasize this, that the more intuitive you can be and the more you can trust and the less you ask, well, why? And what's the cause? And why isn't it? The, the more you get into those questions, the further away you're going to get from improvement. Yeah. I don't ask um, those questions you're you're being very intuitive around it and you know with the essential oils the essential oils work the best when you're intuitive with them Mm -hmm. and same with the color therapy you know vision is a very intuitive sense Mm -hmm. and the sad part of it is because of school and culture and the structures that we're living under we've lost the intuitive nature of vision it's it's Mm -hmm. become very linear mechanical left brain and you're regaining it because you're allowing your intuition to come in and guide you and you're not blocking it by going into the fear of asking all these questions i mean when when somebody is asking well what's the cause and what's you know oh it's that's fear and i get it fear is you know we all got i've got fear everybody's got fear Mm -hmm. and you just have to say hmm what's my intuition say how can i be guided in this and that's exactly i so appreciate you sharing that and that's why things are working so well and my prediction is yes you will be able to see the computer without glasses someday and getting out of those progressive lenses your vision went from being so narrow to you've got a wide view now and you probably didn't realize I didn't, and Dr. Sam, when, when they gave me those progressives, I didn't, it didn't feel right, but. Right, it didn't feel right. Bad. It didn't, and I, I kept going back and they tried to make me feel bad. You can't see out of them, well, you just do this. And it was like, they right. were belittling me. And then I, I finally realized that's not for yeah. me. And you, you just have to know that, you know, what, whatever you decide, trust your feelings, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, trust what feels right. And. You know, the, the, the information I present is not for everybody. Uh, you know, when I was at this glaucoma meeting, I was talking to some of the other doctors. They're not intuitive. They're not interested in, you know, the healing part of it. They have their ways, which is, you know, it's a necessary part of the process if you're in that world. But if you can get into that wider intuitive and trusting, um, the sky's the limit. So um, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing um, your experience because I think for all of us, it's very beneficial to hear hear it from somebody else. The more, you know, when we get into a group, somebody is going to say something and the other person's go, oh, wow, yeah. And it's not necessarily going to come from me. Um, that's why I like about the group work because I can say it, but sometimes I feel people are deaf. They just don't hear what I say. But if you say it, ah, then they hear it. So there's a different broadcast. So um, anything else you want to share? Or do you uh, feel complete? Anything else you want to complete? Thank you. I'm going to continue. I'm continuing. Yes. 
and then please the twisting untwisting of the body that's the next one i'm thinking that i'm i'm feeling like mm -hmm. you need to, i need to talk about that stigmatism to yeah figured that out because they've been telling me that for a long time so it's like okay mm -hmm. i'm bow leg yeah. so i'm thinking maybe it might have something to oh, do with that very much so um watch on my website i'm going to be putting out a, a blog i just wrote on astigmatism and i really I tackle it in a different kind of a way, uh, twisting, turning, and uh, talk about ways to reverse astigmatism. Okay. So uh, watch for that, but keep going. You're you're on it, and trust the process, and you will surpass why you took the retreat to begin with. So thank I you. Thanks for it. sharing. I appreciate being, it. Being thank here. you so much. You got it. Okay. Um, all right. Who else wants to? Can I go have the talking stick, please? Yes, please. Um, so um, I, I've been doing that N hum since you, when you taught that. Um, and oh, for about 15 minutes, hum, hum, yes. the N hum, yeah. And then, you know, and then I do that for a couple of minutes. And after that, I just do continue palming and it's kind of like a meditative thing, meditation, um, <laughs> so, uh, meditation uh, work also. And I've begun uh, using magnifiers, uh, net, uh, plus 3.5. Uh, several times a day mm -hmm. for you know two minutes it's, it's like it's just really relaxing to my eyes i love it <laughs> yeah you're nearsighted so you're yeah. nearsighted so you're using the plus lens and that's mm -hmm. exactly what it does so anybody that's nearsighted out there using that plus lens as a way to relax you know we've even had people jump on a rebounder while they're wearing those blurry glasses so when you bring movement to the blurry glasses it activates even more of the retina, okay? And more of the vestibular system and more of the relaxation. So mm -hmm. movement even stimulates it more if you wanna do that. But okay. I'm so glad to hear you're using that as a way to regulate or self-regulate your vision. And that's the ultimate, you know? The ultimate is doing what you're doing, which is like, okay, how can I relax my eyes? Because certainly, you know, the doctors going to that experience is the opposite of relaxation, it stresses mm -hmm. you more. Um, so what else, what else have you been doing and what, what else is going on? And I haven't gotten to the patching of one eye with using the magnifiers, but I'll get to that. Um, and also I scheduled, okay. uh, <laughs> yeah, I scheduled two, um, a couple of cranial sacral therapy sessions for January. I mean, apparently there aren't mm. enough specialists uh, there. She's booked like oh. five weeks out. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Mm. It's so good I'm work. And especially in this time um people are looking for that kind of release and so um that could be very helpful in supporting your vision mm -hmm. to stay in that you know relaxation state to this morning i had a colleague work on my own cranial cranial session and work, i had her work on my eyes and um, i i do that every four to six weeks just because of the tension that we're constantly under with the screens and everything and um so I think that's a, if you find a good therapist you like, sounds like this person is awesome. It's very beneficial. Again, those of you that are struggling, maybe you need to get some outside input from somebody who's going to come like from this angle that you haven't figured out. And that's going to just open things up for you. Um, so wonderful. I'm glad you're doing the cranial sacral. Anything else? Uh, well, the reason you mentioned that is, is so I'm hoping to it'll like help alleviate some of the astigmatism in my prescription. So okay, I, I, mm -hmm. okay. So I'll just, I I think you can. Um, again, with the with the astigmatism, um, when you start unwinding the body, uh, the the prescription in the eye changes, and I've measured that where I've I've un, I've done some unwinding in the body, and then I remeasure in an eye exam. And uh, what happens is I can't find the astigmatism or it's much less. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is you, you unwind the body, but then you put the strong astigmatism lens on the eye. Well, guess what happens? You don't maintain that, that unwinding. You start to revert back because the eyes are so dominant in our daily, you know, our daily activities. And they may be considering, if you haven't already, getting a non-astigmatism correction that you would you, know, you would use in non-demanding situations and that could support your body um to you know really absorb that treatment in a way that 
you know, this twist and warping is going to go away because when you've got a warp in your eye, it is really altering your perceptual uh, decision making and your spatial understanding. Um, because once that warp goes away and you start seeing things without that warping, um, it's amazing how much freedom you have in your visual system. And this again for everybody. Um, and it's not talked about in eye care because all they're doing is measuring the astigmatism and then reinforcing the warping. That's basically what they're, they're doing. And they think they're doing the right thing. But it's, it's, if you're interested in getting rid of it, um, then, then you've got to look outside of that. So I, I think you can get rid of the astigmatism and, um, you know, just monitor that closely. I think using the eye patch mm -hmm. today, I was doing a session with somebody. I said, two minutes, just do the eye patch two minutes each eye, and it will change how the two eyes are collaborating with the brain. Just two minutes mm -hmm. and do each eye equally. It could be very profound because it's, it's interrupting the habitual way that your two eyes are in the world. And that's where the patch comes in because you block the eye and then the other one has more vision and then you unblock the eye and then that the two eyes come back together in a very different relationship. If you keep doing that, the, that neuroplasticity access is really, uh, is really the thing. So right on, right on. Can I ask what you three else? quick questions? Yeah, um, please so fire you, away. Are you still willing to write us like prescriptions that we request? Like you can say email it to us. Is that? Yeah. Email, email it to me. Um, and just tell me what you want and yeah, mm -hmm, I can do that okay. for you. Sure. Okay. And also is it a good idea to, uh, get a prescription for like computer close-up glasses without a stig astigmatism? It, not for just, I don't, yeah, I don't think that's a, the next step. I think the first step would be just get non-astigmatism and start working with that one. The issue that I see with people when they ask for that is that they're still straining at the computer mm -hmm. um, because the astigmatism does give you a level of clarity that you will need on the screen. Mm -hmm. So the, the sequence would be get the, get the exercise glasses, wear them for a while, and then maybe say after three months, um, if you're feeling really good about when you wear it, because you know, when you go from wearing an astigmatism to a non-astigmatism, it's very disconcerting uh, for people mm. because it's so different. Mm. You're, you're stepping into a, a non-warped world and that's weird. You know, it's unfamiliar. So I, I think you got to take it in steps, but I do think, yes, down the road, you could get a computer prescription without the astigmatism. Okay, but so what do you this say first? Yeah, distance, distance without prescription with without astigmatism yeah. first. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. And the last question. Um, so I also started acupuncture yes uh, yesterday, and um, and um, and the the, the acupuncturist said suggests that I drink go to an herbal store and drink chrysanthemum tea to help with floaters. Do you know anything about that? Eye floaters. Uh, I, I haven't found chrysanthemum tea to be the answer. Uh, some other things that you might try would be the 15% MSM eye drops. Oh, I have um, the five. And that, I have your 5%. Well, the <laughs> yeah, the 15 is really, and what you okay. could do is go on, go on my, uh, customer reviews of the 15% and look at what people are okay. writing and that could help you. Okay. Um, and you need to use it probably four to six times a day mm. if you're going to do that. Okay. Um, another thing you could do is it, there's a study that came out about pineapple, eating daily pineapple, the bromelain. Mm -hmm. um, it's an enzyme that actually helped get rid of floaters. Okay. And number three, to really exercise your, your – um, I'll, I'll get to you in a second, Felicia, um, that the lymph system, moving your lymph, especially in the eyes, like the eye tracing might mm -hmm. be good. You know, we did that with the thumb. 
So the eye movements um, can be really helpful for, um, again, flushing the floaters out. The, the, you could try the chrysanthemum. I have not um, had that, that kind of success, but maybe this person has. But those would be the things that I would focus on with the floaters. Okay, thank you, Dr. Burns. Okay. All right, I think Felicia, do you wanna? Yeah, Etheria. Uh, come on, yeah, hi. See, Dr. You nice said something, Dr. Sam, and yeah. I've been doing it. Yeah. I've been drinking um, pineapple Chrysanthemum? juice. Chrysanthemum? Oh, no. pineapple, okay. Yes. Pineapple. I, um, yeah. I started what a little after we did this every okay. day. And I wonder right. if that's the connection with the floaters. I don't, you know, maybe, maybe not. But when you just said that, I'm like, uh, I felt well, great it is. for it. There, there actually is a connection. Um, wow. And so, you know, it's uh, it's in the research. I mean, there's science around it. So it's, um, so yes, yes, yes. You that know, was a new and one. It, diff different things work for different people. Mm -hmm. You know, for some people, it's a lymph. For other people, it's liver detox. I was working with a lady today who had had a head trauma and that triggered the floaters and the 15% MSM was helpful to her. Yeah. But it's floaters are tricky because there are many reasons why we develop them mm -hmm. and you have to stay the course, be patient, be willing to try different things. And, um, but I'm thrilled that you discovered the pineapple and it seems to be working it for you. It seems to be. I'll keep drinking it. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, keep drinking it. It's good for you. Right on. Okay, anybody else uh, brave enough to come on? Good, bad, or indifferent? I'm so glad we're getting these mixed results because the people that are, you know, getting some results, it's good for us to hear because, you know, <clears throat> then maybe you'll hear something like, oh, well, maybe I'll try it this way or... Maybe I need to have a mindset like this. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from the iClarity podcast show today. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify and leave a review. See you here next time. <laughs>